Hello and welcome to the Synergia People Podcast 2023. My name is Marie Harding. I'm also known as Flash. I found the ranch with John Allen in 19... I found it in 1968, actually. Before that, we had been together in New York. We met in Vietnam and in India. He had a vision of a, a certain kind of a way of living. We decided to come out to New Mexico. And uh, we, we drove out, out here, broke down in Oklahoma, right by his family's house. So I got to meet his father. I set off in my trusty Datsun pickup around this area looking for a uh, property. Johnny knew a woman named Letta Wofford. She was the greatest woman. She was in the Indian blanket and everything else, selling business, trading, and all that. She had these great meetings around the kitchen table with her husband, who was entirely different. But in any case, they, it was just terrific. She showed me this place, this Synergy Ranch property. I mean, it was unbelievable. We drove up. There's buildings big buildings there, adobe buildings. There was one ruined, burned building, um, but there were numerous uh, spaces where we could just start with a group of people and start to make a different way of living and uh, to have a place to really look at ideas of how to reach one's human potential. So we having been in Cerrillos with a small group and having been um, in San Francisco uh, for the famous 1967 fiesta, <laughs> freedom, um, freedom deal, it was quite astounding, it was quite fabulous. We started a restaurant there, and I we found a house. We had made enough from the restaurant to pay the rent for the house and the restaurant. And Who we, is we? Um, this was, uh, it must have been about eight of us. I don't totally remember who was all there at the beginning, but I will say that we, we were living in this house, and somehow uh, Freddie, Bill Nemster, showed up there and walked in the door, and I happened to be standing by the stairs. And he kissed me, just like that, probably on the cheeks. I, I don't remember really kissing me on the cheek or the lips or what, but that was that. And he said, okay, how can I help you? <laughs> and so on and so forth. But uh, So we were uh, gathering sometimes per week and studying what we called then e-groups, and we, we worked on uh, exercises for the intellectual center, structures, on um, emotional sequences, which we had developed based on the seven deadly sins. And each seven of the seven deadly sins had a sequence. Um, and it was, had two sequences. One was where you'd normally go if you're automatic, and then the possibility where you could go after experiencing the two very essential emotions, uh, fear and confusion. And then we did uh, various theater work for a moving center. You were earlier saying that you were looking for a different kind of life, a different mm -hmm. way of living. Different way what of is life. the different way of living? What, do, what were you looking for? As it was, we all lived in our various cultures in the United States. There's a lot of different cultures in the United States. In my own case, I was I grew up in Long Island, North Shore of Long Island, and New England. It was sort of an interesting period. I was born in 1941, and I went to uh, Miss Porter's school in Farmington, Connecticut, it was a finishing finishing school for ladies. And then I went on to Sarah Lawrence College in Bronxville, New York, which was a, a whole different way of approaching education. My fate was to marry a banker or somebody like that. And my parents hadn't even given me a middle name because they figured that Harding would be my middle name. 
This did not appeal to me, to put it mildly. So what appealed uh, to you? Uh, I really was in, in for adventure. And so, I mean, after college, I had this opportunity sitting around the lawn with these ladies. And one of the gals said, I'm going to India. Who wants to come? And my hand went up just like that, just oh, no thought whatsoever, because I, I was terrified. I had nothing planned. I didn't know what to do. I knew what I didn't want, but I didn't know what I wanted, and except that I wanted something else, but had no, no, no concept. So when that happened, then like a whole world opened up, the world I, was, I knew would lead me somewhere. So it turned out quite differently. Totally differently. Uh, my father, luckily, he had gone around the world after his Harvard graduation with his best buddy friend, and uh, they they went to India. And uh, my father played the saxophone, and he the tax Cummings played the piano. So uh, you had this connection I to had, these had foreign this. countries. Yeah, he did, and he was a very adventuresome guy. He was a businessman, and he he was kind of a really cool guy. You started this year in the late 60s. His giving me enough money to go travel to India where I met John Allen and I re-met him in Vietnam by, do you believe in coincidence? No. <laughs> well, anyway, I met him. I was working at a volunteer, as a volunteer at a hospital up in near a town called Dampau. And he came up, blah, 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 this led to that. And we actually got married there. Uh, he was really following certain uh, new ideas in New York. He joined a group, which I didn't know. And these were ideas which then were carried back to here. And what was the idea? What were you going? Do you want to settle down here? What was your plan doing here? To basically make a new civilization. Uh, just a different way of living. Different way? In which way? Well, first of all, we all had to make our own spaces. If you were a couple, didn't matter, your own territory. Everybody came here, however, as an individual. And each person was was really looked at in terms of an individual. Because our, our, so much of our own work was to do with individuality right. and discovering our most, uh, our best potential. What did you discover? I was kind of irascible. And I uh, had a bad temper, <laughs> and um, I didn't know a damn thing about managing anything. Uh, I was completely devoted to doing the project, absolutely, so I would do anything, practically anything. And um, I've, I actually found out I wasn't particularly stupid <laughs> or something, and also that I um, have a lot of talent with my, my hands and with my body to make things and to uh, to work. Yeah. But, I so I learned, I mean, I learned all kinds of skills. I learned how to build furniture. I learned how to weld. Um, I learned how to fix practically anything. This studio has got all my tools in it to fix a lot of stuff, which I still do do. I learned that I was kind of scrupulously, unscrupulously, no, scrupulously honest. And I ended up taking care of the money. So how out of these, this group of individuals, how did a we came up? Something what was like the binding factor among the these synergia people? Synergia would be, synergy. synergy was a binding factor, and these three lines of work, which were involving the work on the individuality, which was the theater or art or something artistic, where that part of the brain or that part of manifestation. Yeah. Um, ecology. The second one, yes. And enterprise. Okay. And so we knew we needed to make a living, but our aim was not... The bottom line, which was also certainly where I know I would have gone to, was the, you know, rich hustling, bottom line, blah, blah, stuff. But I didn't have that mentality, actually, at all. I was more of a kind of a wild kid. How did, did you get tamed? I hope I'm not. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I was called the random element. The random element? The random element. Because I could It's do a nice title, no? Yes, it's wonderful. And because I could do just about anything. And I could be a really good leader for a short period of time. So like one time in, when, in one of our other projects in Australia, we couldn't, the people who were there, I don't know, the person who was managing that place, Columbia Downs in Australia, it was Cattle Ranch. Um, nobody could get the cattle to go into the corral. We go out, we round them all up. We had like 750 head, something like that, and a whole group of people and bringing them, bringing them, bringing them in. And then as soon as they, you know, nobody could get them in the damn corral. They would just split off and disappear. So, I mean, this is an example of what happened sort of many times. And then you got them in? Well, then I was put in charge. I didn't know what the hell to do. <laughs> But I knew that I knew the person who did, who I don't know why we couldn't get them in or she couldn't before. But, you know, I just rode with her and I said, well, what do we do? What do we, you know, what's the best thing to do? And she said, well, first off, You've got to look at these cattle as if every single one of them is a pile of green bills. And they're mo this is money. And we're not going to get any of that unless they go into this, you know, whatever. Who knows what happened? There's, there's powers that we don't know about. There's things that happened for God knows why. And anyway, so there we were and... We got up to the thing, and the cattle all went into the yard. <laughs> huh? The random element. Random element. I don't know. Did I do it? No, I didn't do it. Looking back over this 60 years now, what would you say were your biggest learning? Oh, God, it was, it's all learning. It's even learning now. I mean, I'm coming into a whole different time of life, and... I haven't got a damn clue. So I'm, I'm, you know, learning like mad. I'm preparing like mad. And, I mean, a lot of it's coming. It's instinctive, but it's, wow. I mean, I learned so many things. I helped in, in, with the construction. Actually, Johnny, had, in a way, almost had to hold me back because I, I am small and I am full of beans and energy and stuff like that. Um, but I, you know, every now and again, I just collapse. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff, and I, I didn't even believe it when I did. I say, is this true? I'd ask myself, is this true? Is this a real thing that I'm exhausted? How, how can I know that I'm exhausted? I learned so much in the theater. Theater taught me to accept my vulnerability, let's put it that way. That's a big thing. Yes. Very hard lesson and not learned really f till maybe even really recently. <laughs> not really learned till really recently. So you have done or you were part of a couple of projects which emerged out of the people here coming together uh, in the late 60s. What for you personally was the most important one? Part of our work was to travel and I actually ended up love I love traveling, traveling yeah. and we got we had buses we we had a bus here we had a bus in Europe the Europe mobile drove all the way from south of France to Bombay all the way through Iran and all the way through all these wonderful desert and other cultural areas we had wild experiences and so on and so forth so all of that was astounding Traveling is important, no? Traveling is, yeah. I had evidently, I guess, as a random element, I could just m meld in with almost any culture. Fine. What kept this group together in your eyes? Johnny was a very good leader. If something happened the night before, the day before, where he kind of was angry about something, next morning... You know, it was just all laughs and fun, and and uh, I mean, he he knew how to 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 do that. Um, we've been accused of being a cult, but we were not a cult. <laughs> and and but I can see how people would say so. People were free to leave and go anytime they wanted, and sometimes they were kicked out. 
you know, because they were just negative. I mean, they just mm-hmm. yeah. kind of not not they just you know the the the, the vibes weren't working. It just wasn't, and they everybody here had to have some kinds of intention, had to have an intention, a a line of work that you're doing that you're in charge of, even if it's the garbage or whatever it is. Everybody was in charge of something, and and nobody else could do anything in that area without either asking or check or in some areas of course were big and so you had somebody in charge and a lot of people working on it but the the lead person was the leader they were right. the they they so you had to we always had lead, leadership that way just as a person who could run things you know and so on and so forth through their through their minds so looking back was it worth to look for this different way of life yes No doubt. No Very doubt. Very clear answer. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So my last question, Flash, was you actually started out that you were saying, you know, you are slowly moving into a new phase in your life, mm-hmm. that you are stepping back. Mm-hmm. How do you see see these things moving on once you step back? Well, I've already stepped back on a lot of stuff. I, I, my sort of mantra is: if you're standing on the garden, it can't grow. Get off the garden, and it will grow. And that's what I'm seeing. And I'm still participating, obviously. It's going to be totally different. It already is totally different. It's been totally di- different since biosphere, or even before biosphere. Actually, it's, it's say sometimes, in, sometimes in the '80s, we really started shifting. And we started doing big. Well, we did the Caravan of Dreams, which was in Fort Worth. That was a big project, you know, and it was really different scale than anything we'd done before. So it had it was just you know it was much more regular world, if you want to say that. What was this Caravan of Dreams? No one has spoken so far about this. Uh-huh. So please, yeah, you yeah, jump yeah. in now. Uh oh. Okay. Um, Caravan of Dreams was in Fort Worth, Texas, and we wanted to raise the level, this is how it was formulated, raise the level of Fort Worth, Texas, one quarter of an inch. That was all. It wasn't a big thing. It was a huge thing. So we found a building downtown. Um, we kept the exterior the way it was. It was an old, you know, kind of... Looking, you know, not old, not old, 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 but a certain style of building, and then we basically inside pretty much changed every everything. Um, and the bo- and the bottom floor we had a, like a dojo, or a place with wood floors and mirrors that you, you could do whatever in, and that um, was it was more, almost more private. Although I think we did do some. Martial art type stuff down there sometimes. I read it out. Blah, blah, blah. Not sure. What happened inside the building? And, there's, and then the next floor was the uh, jazz and blues nightclub. So it was kind of cultural institution. It yeah, but the institution not quite, oh. but it was yes. And we we our idea was there because there's a lot of blacks and whites in Fort Worth, Texas. Texas is like that. It's less so here. This this state, um, we're culturally totally different, and we wanted to get the blacks and the whites together. And what would bring them together? What was jazz and blues and really good music? Really fine, top 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 musicians came. I mean, you name them, they were there. What does this painting mean to you? I mean, we're sitting now here in your studio, surrounded by paintings. Very different kind of paintings, mm-hmm. what does painting mean to you? There's something so magical about you having a white thing in front of you. And I've done, done I've approached that white thing in different ways. All those white things were just pieces of paper. But um, I just, stood, I, I was using um, oil pastels. And so I just let my hand go. And then I would start to see something in it. And then I would Work it. Then I was very much into faces and stuff like that. So very often it would go in that direction because that's kind of where I was. I've got paintings in here that I really don't like, but I did them, and they have a history. And there's other ones here that I don't like that are got their faces against the wall. 
Or, although some of them are fine. They're okay. They're okay. But I've used up all the walls in the ranch now. Most of my art, although I learned a huge amount from this person or that person or this school or that, most of it's self-taught. self-taught. And I never, I did try to, had a whole run of people at some point, us guys. They weren't very good. And it was, wasn't my thing. People, people was not so much my thing. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I mean, they totally are, because that's what I deal with every single day. That's why I'm here and everything. I couldn't do anything without people, but it's sort of like something else is just more out there in the the woods, (laughs) like I grew up or in the garden or something. Yeah. Cool. I think I have everything. Okay. It was quite a different conversation than the others. Really? Yes. I think it really gives a nice... Nice perspective on who you are. Thank you for listening and please stay tuned for the next episode of the Synergia People Podcast 2023.